greater um, principle of the Pachigar homeopathic medical storage for the longest time. And uh, I remember sharing a lot of seminars or webinars. No, not webinars. Sorry, that time there were no webinars. Only seminars at Surat in the Pachigar College. He, and we had a great time. He would be here every year for the SSMS. And his wife, Meena Banker, also is a very good friend of ours. Then he moved to Canada, but he didn't abandon NGH. And he continues to be with NGH and while practicing there. So, yeah, so we have uh, had a very good time. And today I'm really, really looking forward to how he has changed his practice in Canada. It's never very easy. Somebody asked me to, you know, change, like my husband wanted to move somewhere. And I said, no, 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 I can't move. I have to practice only in Mumbai. So we have stuck to Mumbai. And sometimes he blames me for not going anywhere and just keeping him tied to Mumbai. But I'm happy. So he's happy. Yeah. So Akshay? Please share with us your knowledge. Sure. Thank you, madam. It was a pleasure. Uh, I, I, I spoke with Dr. Vrushali yesterday that uh, madam is our uh, moderator and that is the greatest thing that we can look into. So thank you very much for uh, being a moderator for us. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak on this platform all team members very close to my yes, house, yes. So i have to yes yeah but you have been a motherly figure for all of us in making us grow gradually as days pass and uh, njh platform yes uh, it is uh, a pleasure to talk on this platform and it is an honor to talk on this platform as you said i have been with njh since its inception and i have learned so much from njh uh, the, the team building that you have taught us, the knowledge that we have acquired through all these uh, journals that have come up. And even now, when I go into a lecture, uh, if it is related to one of the topic of which we have had in NJH, I will surely look into that journal and definitely get few points which I can share with my students here. So, NJH, salute. Uh, let me share my screen now. So, yeah, so we were thinking about what uh, topic we should take. And then uh, me and Dr. Vrushali thought we'll take acutes because as she said uh, that it is one of the most important topic that uh, we should embrace every now and then we see cases and one case can bring the whole family to us and one case can take the whole family from us if we are not able to treat the acute in that family am i visible yes but full screen uh, Akshay. it hasn't gone full screen no. okay on my screen it is full screen try it again Where is my Zoom? One second. Go from the lower bottom. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. It's still not full screen on my screen. Let me reduce this. So. Ah, yes. Is it better now? Yes, yes. Perfect. So I couldn't do the uh, slideshow. So I think it is difficult in this uh, computer as of now. So again, coming back to acute, uh, let us talk about acute disease, which uh, we have already looked into. And from the organ on point of view, So when we study organ on during student years, it is mainly studied for tests or exams. But when we study organ on while we are practicing, then we really understand the meaning of what Honeyman has written in organ on. We understand the gist of organ on. And we understand this because we are facing problems and we try to search for solutions. 
we go here and there and finally uh, all of our friends or teachers they guide us back to organon so basically organon uh, for newcomers especially it is the clinical experience of hanuman what hanuman experienced during his journey in evolution of homeopathy he put it on papers so if we are following the footsteps of hanuman we are going to have similar experience as he had we will have similar difficulties which he had we will have similar questions which we which he had but for us it will be easy because he has already given us solution in organon which we have to understand follow apply and see the results what are acute diseases hanuman defines acute disease in aphorism 72 they are rapid morbid processes of abnormally deranged vital force which have a tendency to finish their course more or less quickly in a moderate time like dr rushali said this is the precise thing when patient comes to us he wants to get rid of this problem as fast as possible because the the symptoms that he is having they are overwhelming for him they are in some way disturbing him in his routine activity for a chronic disease the patient is already suffering for some time and he has got used to many of his symptoms but acute disease the patient is not used to and so he wants a immediate relief as we see in organ on further acute disease are classified into individual sporadic and epidemic acute disease are periodic they are recurring or relapsing and they are acute exacerbation of chronic so we will only take a small fraction of what is acute we will not take the whole of acute because as we see here periodic recurring relapsing acute exacerbation it requires lot of understanding and learning and that will take some more time so we'll do that some other time in future first time hanuman spoke about acute disease was in aphorism 5 useful to the physician in assisting him to cure are the particulars of the most probable exciting cause of the acute disease here right in the beginning hanuman said that when we want to treat an acute we have to know what are the exciting causes so exciting causes if we know means we know half of how to treat acute and then he speaks about the process of case taking for acute especially in aphorism 82 aphorism 90 and aphorism 99 where he specifically mentions the same uh, thing that how the patient speaks how the patient comes to us how the patient makes a phone call and uh, books an appointment all these things they help us in understanding the patient right from beginning but uh, to take a case of acute is very easy because the symptoms have existed for only a short time patient is very much affected with the type of symptoms that he has so as he mentions here that recently it is still fresh in the memory of the patient and the people around this patient they also have noticed these changes that are happening in the patient for a short duration and so the symptoms which are said or revealed to the uh, physician is they are very pregnant or they are very prominent and so we do not have to take that much time which we usually take with a chronic case in an acute acute, acute case totality in acute cases exciting cause or ailments from very important we if we have this we were uh, taught by i was taught by my teachers that if you have the ailments from then one ailments from can rule out the whole totality so that is very important expression of patient verbal and gestures information from family relatives attendant very important observation of physician himself extremely important this observation of physician has to be correlated with the information that we really receive from family relatives and attendant how to judge the effect of medicine hanuman in organon writes about signs of commencing improvement 
the most important signs that we find in commencing improvement is the patient feels better generally. Second, he assumes a normal favorable posture, very, very important. So because of the disease, because he's trying to get relief from the disease, he assumes a posture which is related to that disease, not related to his normal self. So when you give a remedy to this patient, when he is there in front of you, he would be sitting like this or like this. But as soon as the remedy effect comes, he starts becoming normal. I've seen this happen in uh, my clinic that when the patient comes and uh, he's in uh, acute state and I give him a remedy and by the time he stands up from his seat, he said, what did you give me? Because it has already been hardly 10 minutes and I have started feeling better. So a normal favorable posture, which is assumed is very important and patient may not be telling you this, but it is for us to observe. He starts taking interest in surroundings like people around reading or playing. This is especially seen in children. When uh, they are sick, they will behave in a particular way, but when the remedy starts working, they be start behaving in a, pro pro in a normal way. And even though the symptoms, the fever may come down later, but these changes are noticed right at that point of time. The expressions of distress reduced from face. In children and adults, irritability, crying, obstinacy, grumbling, sleeplessness, restlessness, etc. is seen to reduce. So acutes form one of the main part of our private practice. One of the best way of gaining expertise in treating acutes is to hear experiences from, for someone and other is to know the theoretical therapeutics. It is very important to attend seminars, webinars, uh, lectures of people who have been in practice for a long time because hearing their experience, hearing their success stories, it will convince us about the efficacy of homeopathy, one. It will also convince us about the effects that a particular medicine has produced in, in their experience, and it is still applied in modern times. So very, very important that we need to attend and hear these experiences. When we talk about treating the acutes, we also may speak of various methods of application which may represent some homeopath, like Honeymanian, Kantian, Boninghausen, Burnett, Sensation, Predictive, Segal. We talk about these uh, methods when we, when we treat an acute. All these methods come from one source, Honeyman. So, but these methods have been modified according to what was given importance in the history of the patient. And all these are valid ways of prescribing. I believe we should know about each of these without prejudice and apply whenever they are needed. We have to know which method is applicable in which set of symptoms that patient come to us with. So let us, let me take you on a journey with some of these methods that have helped me in my practice. First, let us see how we prescribe traditionally. We may call it Honeymanian, Kantian or any other name. This is the way we prescribe most of the time generally, or I would say I started my practice doing this type of uh, prescriptions and it has helped me a lot. When I was in my third LCH, one of my cousin's wife was hospitalized for eclampsia at nine months amenorrhea with intrauterine fetal death. Doctors were trying to deliver the fetus and treat the eclampsia. It was urgent for the fetus to be delivered because of fear of septicemia. Two days passed, every possible means were employed for results without effect. Lady developed septicemia and became comatose. Then one family friend's help was sought. He was a homeopath. He gave two types of liquids which were to be applied on the skin of face and limbs and inhaled. In next 24 hours, the dead fetus was delivered. Dilutions were of Cantharis Q and Sabina Q. Cantharis, as mentioned in our Materia Medica, it expels moles, dead fetuses, membranes, etc. And the medicines to promote expulsion of dead fetus are Cantharis, Pulsatilla, Sabina, Sikelcor. 
so uh, this was one of the earlier experiences that i had of the efficacy of homeopathy and you can imagine how much convinced i would have become when i see something of this happening in front of me another case a 65 year old man was operated for coronary bypass and then he developed hospital acquired infection with wbc count of 30000 and not coming down with the latest antibiotics he was developing septicemia a friend of mine took me to see him he was in icu with tubes everywhere in him i gave him pyrogen 1m and gunpowder 1m alternate in dilution in water next day the count was 20000 and the third day count came down to 10000 other medicines we can think about in such conditions are anthracinum terentilla cubensis arsenic alb streptococcinum lecasis staphylococcinum etc jh clark in gunpowder as a warm war remedy book he writes that gunpowder corresponds to suppuration in a great number of forms many of them septic the great sphere of action of gunpowder is in cases of septic suppuration i have not found it disagree with any other remedy so that there are, there need be no fear of alternating it with some other remedy if particularly indicated but gunpowder may also be used as a prophylactic that is to say it will not only cure septic suppuration when present but it will afford such protection to the organism against harmful germs those wounds will be less likely to become septic in one who is under its influence so remember this remedy not very commonly used but has great potential next case sister of one of my student had met with an accident with injuries and fractures she was bedridden the student said ever since this accident she is not able to sleep because of the pain doctors have tried all medicines to reduce pain and make her sleep she was last put on morphine and pethidine dr eb nash writes in his leaders in homeopathic therapeutics when after a wound sprain or fracture the patient tells you since my accident i do not have sound sleep i sleep badly one dose of 200 brings sleep this is a remedy with the characteristic that it does not habitually work on insomnia but it makes fracture victims asleep very peculiar i haven't seen this in materia medica otherwise so i thought to give it a try and give stricta pulmonaria 200 two doses in two days student came and informed that now her sister can sleep so this again confirms what uh, dr nash experienced in his days even it is applicable nowadays next case i had a neighbor who developed herpes zoster he took allopathic medicines and eruptions disappeared but soon after this he started having severe burning pain in the region of eruptions burning was present day and night and there was nothing which could relieve him i gave him miserium on the symptom post herpetic neuralgia and he was better in 15 days another case a 35 year male patient came with complaint of throat pain on left side since 4 days pain started after taking plenty of cold drinks pain was pricking type which was worse by empty swallowing and better by hot drinks and solid food there was no fever no body ache no malaise patient was chilly thirst was reduced patient was thirstless but was chilly so pulsatilla was ruled out location of pain was left side but pain was better by hot drinks and patient was chilly so lecasis was ruled out the picture of patient was suggesting lecasis but patient was chilly chilly lecasis is sebadilla in throat complaints the symptoms of sebadilla are left sided remedy aggravated by empty swallowing chilly patient thirst reduced better by hot drinks sebadilla 200 3 doses cured him <clears throat> another case on 28 september 2019 one of my autism patients mother called me from india saying that asta is having cough plus plus whether here is alternating hot and cold and humid so maybe because of that she has this cough 
she said it is since four days she coughs whole day so i asked what else is happening to her mother said she starts crying without reason any time so i said what is her thirst she said no thirst so we already know what is the remedy what what is important is that even when we ask the parent or when we ask the relative what else is happening they will also say what is more prominent so we will have uh, an exact symptom which is needed for our uh, understanding so the remedy was pulsatilla thirstless and crying one dose in the evening another next day morning the second day she called and said that her cough is much better and the crying stopped third day she said that the cough is almost gone another case a female patient age 45 came on 5th october she was operated for fibroid before 2 weeks since then she has severe pain in abdomen gas heaviness in abdomen and bloated feeling she is constipated she cannot eat since 2 weeks anything she eats she feels gassy there is acidity burning in epigastrium from spicy food appetite is present but does not have desire to eat weight reduced there is no irritation no burps no flatus stool is soft but difficult to pass urging is there <clears throat> the remedy given to her was raffanus sativus in 200 potency in 15 days time she was much better the pain in abdomen was less stool was better still she was feeling weak and tired appetite improved thirst present no burning in stomach no gas and she was absolutely fine in another 10 days time farrington in his clinical materia medica writes raffanus is also to be thought of in cases with accumulation and retention of flatus and he gives example of james bell he operated on a patient uh, and after this operation the patient had was tympanetic not passing any flatus and this remedy relieved dr clark in dictionary of practical materia medica says raffanus is one of the most flatulent of remedies wind accumulates so that it almost stops the breathing the most characteristic feature is when the flatus cannot be passed up either up or down such a condition occurring after abdominal operations has been relieved by raffanus so along with this because along with the uh, the remedy the books name that dr brushali gave i would like to add these two books uh, rather these three uh, dr nash leaders in homeopathic therapeutics uh, clinical materia medica by farrington dr j h clark dictionary of practical materia medica wonderful books great basic understanding we can have from of a remedy <clears throat> another case recently in december in 2021 one of my patient came back from pakistan after six weeks stay she had some teeth cleaning done there and since then her teeth left sided had become very sensitive she did complain on her return but it was a casual remark so her other symptoms were given more importance then one day her husband called me saying that she is having excessive pain in teeth and they went to the dentist they are doing everything the dentist has suggested taken pain killers but there is no relief he asked if there is anything in homeopathy which can help her so i asked him to collect the medicine she took few doses of the medicine from afternoon to evening and called me to say that the pain has reduced more than 80% which was cured by next day morning now she carries that medicine as sos she was given hypericum 30 considering pain teeth injury to nerves very easy prescription see acute in acute diseases i have seen that you don't need to have difficult uh, diseases or rare medicines or uh, something which is not known in homeopathy for last 200 years we these are very common medicines and very easy to apply so remember acute diseases are pretty easy to treat now there are so many cases like these which have helped me to help my patients and i'm sure we all have or we will have similar experiences these cases taught me and my conviction became more strong that these experiences that were given by our masters have truth even now when applied 
Now let me show you another way to prescribe in acutes. As I said earlier, these types of prescriptions originate from Honeyman, but are named differently because of the way it is done by a particular homeopath. Late Dr. Praful Vijayka developed his method of treating acute cases, especially fevers, as part of his method of practice called predictive homeopathy. He formed an easy reference chart called the flow chart of acutes. I'm sure everyone is aware of it. I have had some wonderful results using it. He took activity as basis to divide the patient into activity increased, activity decreased, no change. Then divided medicines into chilly, hot, and further divided medicines into thirsty, thirstless. He developed a chart for this for easy reference. It has been very useful to me in treating acute cases, especially fevers. This is the chart which he has and we need. And so the treating of acute, especially fevers becomes very easy. Many of my cases fall under the, with the help of this chart I can, I was able to treat. And if they don't fall under this chart, then I use another technique or another way to prescribe. So let us see a few cases. One of my student homeopath called for treatment of his brother-in-law. Symptoms were cough, pain in throat, fever since three days. He had no desire to do his routine activity, felt chilly and did not have thirst. So from the chart, I took dull, chilly and thirstless. And the medicines were sepia, gelsemium, acid phos, ignatia, staphysigria, epicac, natrum carb and china. So which of these? I started inquiring the form of elimination method. There was no indifference, no drowsiness, no desire for refreshing things, no nausea, no weakness. And finally, I came to Ignatia for which I inquired regarding anything in which mentally emotional cause is there. There was a history of death of a near cousin of patient. So based on that, he was given Ignatia 31 dose and he was better in two hours. Another case, a 20-month-old girl was brought with severe cough day and night since 15 days. Parents had tried all treatment with no result. She also had fever since two days. She was shivering and light covering. No desire to eat. Thirst was in sips at long intervals. Desired sweets. She had to be carried constantly as she was crying if left alone. So activity increased was considered kind of looking at the crying constantly. Patient was chilly and thirstless. The remedies were arsenic, Sina and China. With the symptom of be, uh, better by being carried, Sina was given to the patient and she recovered. <clears throat> Another case. A homeopath friend with high fever called at 5.30 p.m. But I was busy in practice, so he called he asked me to call him when I'm free and I forgot to give him a call. So he called me again. He said that I have high fever since morning. I took one Tylenol in morning and then had gone for work. Tylenol is the paracetamol of India. I asked him, why did he go for work when he had high fever? He could have called in sick. He said, I had committed my boss that I will come in morning for four hours. If I don't go, then he can have loss of some thousand dollars. So I went. And again, I took a Tylenol right now. I remained in bed after coming from work, drank warm water. I was feeling chilly at all the time. I did not feel thirsty, but due to chilliness, I was drinking warm water. So the totality was dull, chilly and thirstless. And to that was added diligent because he was sick. He did not call in sick because his boss would suffer. So that was the diligence which he had. And so the remedies which were uh, coming up were phosphoric acid, Ignatia, Staphysigria, and Natrum Carb. So I asked him about any stress on his mind. He said that he is worried about some issues about his work, his job, further studies, and family back home. So there was so much clutter in his mind about all these issues. And that is what led me to give him Ignatia 30, one dose, and he was better. Another case, a 25-year-old girl came 
with complaint of weakness, fever, feeling dull, thirstless, chilly, but she did the work she was given. She was, so the totality was again dull, chilly, thirstless, and diligent. Further inquiry into the case was mainly in relation to these four medicines. She had some emotional disturbance four days back after which these complaints began. Ignatia 200, one dose cured her. Another case. A friend of mine texted me on 13 January 2018 that we are not meeting at his place in evening because he has viral infection since two days. So I called him and asked him details. He replied, I have cough since two days, went to the doctor. He said it looks like viral infection and give me antibiotics, which I am taking. I have high fever since two days with lot of body ache, feel thirsty and want to drink something cold. I am in bed since these days and only getting up to go to washroom. I am feeling very weak and cold whole day. I feel very restless and go to various places, stay there for some time and then go to the other place. <clears throat> we will meet some other day because I don't want, to want you to have infection. I asked him to send someone to collect the medicines from clinic. The totality was taken as dull, chilly, thirsty, and among these, only eupatorium has the extreme bone pains and extreme thirst. So I gave him eupatorium 206 doses. He took one dose on the 13th at 4 p.m. 6 p.m. his fever came down, restlessness decreased, body ache decreased. For first time, he came down from his bedroom, down to his living room and took something to eat. 14th morning, he was better than 13th, though all his symptoms were there slightly. He could eat food, his thirst was same, his body ache was mild, fever was not there, and I advised him to take eupatorium if his symptoms increased or returned, but he did not have to do that. He was perfectly fine, and this was the time, I remember at uh, present that this was the time in 2018 when there were many cases of eupatorium. I, I, even in Canada here, I at least gave eupatorium to about eight, nine of my patients. So it was almost a genus type. <clears throat> now let us see some another method of prescribing which I follow and I have had many successes. Segal method or rediscovery of homeopathy. Late Dr. M. L. Segal developed this method using three Ps in prescribing, present, predominating and persistent. Not very different from Honeyman. Honeyman also says that you have to take what is the present and what is most predominating. But Dr. Segal, he concised his whole uh, case taking in PPP. So he took only symptoms of mind which came up in a case which represented, represented the three Ps. I'll not go into details of this method, which we will do some other time, but let me show you some acute cases worked out with this method. A male patient, age 25 years, was having severe pain in lumbar region, suggesting pain of renal origin. He had following symptoms. Severe pain with feverishness, no desire to eat or drink. His mother reported that he was sleeping whole day and was difficult to arouse him. Also, he did not complain of pain to anyone. He wanted fan. He was drowsy, he was hot and thirstless. Sleep overpowering. Indifference, complaint does not, indifference to suffering. So opium was the remedy. Opium 200 was given and next day he came with a stone. He passed in the morning. Another case. One of my regular patient, a girl seven years old, was brought one day for severe pain in abdomen since three days. The girl had fell out tetralogy, which was operated. Symptoms were child was very drowsy, no desire to drink water, prostrated, chilly, was not eating or drinking anything since four days with fever reaching 104 degrees Fahrenheit. She had no desire to talk to anyone due to severe pain in abdomen. She could not stand or walk straight, but used to walk bent. Urine frequency decreased. Ultrasonography abdomen was done, which revealed pancreas swollen, suggesting acute pancreatitis. Now, this girl, 
uh, it was an advantage to treat this girl because this girl was not taking any other medicine. She would not take any uh, allopathic uh, tablets, injections, would not go to any other, any other system of medicine, only homeopathy. So it was uh, a responsibility on one side and an advantage on the other side. Further history revealed that she liked some sips of cold drink and became angry when she was asked anything. So the totality was taken, dull, chilly and thirstless, and we have a group of remedies here. To these were added, talk indisposed to disturb diversion into being and anger when obliged to answer. So in this case, you see, it was a combination of the Dr. Vijaykar's method and Dr. Segal's method, but overall it was the Honeyman's method. Phosphoric acid came out as the only medicine. Phosphoric acid 30, one dose was given at 7 p.m. At 10 p.m., she asked for food, took milk, and since this time, she became all right in three days. Another case. A homeopath friend called me on 13 June 2015 with complaint of pain left upper limb. Pain on the left upper limb, aggravated standing after driving car. It was like a cervical pain which was radiating to the left upper limb and it was there for last one month. He said that I had to take Advil. I, Advil is the ibuprofen. I have to sit down. There is continuous dull aching pain. I want to take leave from work, but I cannot take leave. Due to this, I cannot do anything in house. I feel tired due to this. Body says to take rest. The symptoms taken were helpless, rest desire for torpor. And the medicine was lycopodium. He was given lycopodium 1M and he was much better with it. Another case. A young girl of 23 years came with a severe pain in right lower chest on the side, laterally. There was difficulty to breathe deep. Aggravation from slight touch. Could not sleep on right side from any activity that could make that part move or come in contact with anything. She took about two to three Tylenols or Advils for one week with no relief. She gave a history of cough for about two weeks. She said, this pain is not letting me breathe properly. I get irritated from it, but I don't care the pain and go for my dance practice. This is the PPP that the patient in the patient that we have to look at. What is present, what is predominating and what is persisting. So the med rubrics were taken and anger interruption from irritability, pain from and defiant and Naxfomica 33 doses relieved in two days. Another case, one patient called me around 7 p.m. for fever. He said last two days, I was very busy with religious activity. My left side hip is paining a lot. I cannot do movement. It pains on motion. Last night I had fever with chills, rigors. I have fever at present. I have remained in bed today. I fear these pains, do something to relieve them. Again, PPP, if we see here, bed desire to remain in, in. patient remained in bed. Business talks off. He said that I was very busy with religious activity. He, he did, not, did not say this to me. Why did he say this? Because that was on his mind. And with that fear of suffering, fear of suffering, I fear these pains. So the remedy was phosphorus. Phosphorus 200 was given, one dose, which relieved in a day. Another case. One patient came with acute pain in throat. She said, I have severe pain in throat. I have severe cough and due to that, my head is paining and I feel sparkling in the eyes. I have to think before coughing. This cough is harassing me a lot. I don't know what to do. Should I take this medicine, that medicine? I don't know what should I take. Why don't you check my throat so you can know what is happening to me? This is, see, these types of common expressions will come. The rubrics taken were delusion, injured is being, fear of suffering. When she said that I have to think before coughing, this was the fear that it was causing pain, light desire for, delusion persecuted, groping in dark, the, the symptoms that the patient said were that I don't know what to do. Should I take this medicine, that medicine? That means the patient is trying to grope 
and understand what to do. Stremonium 200, one dose given at night. 31st May, she reported no cough during sleep, feels better since morning in every way. <clears throat> so thank you very much. I hope this talk has ignited some spark in you for treating acute cases. It was a humble effort on my part to share my experience. My suggestion, read about homeopathy from every source available, learn from old and contemporary homeopaths, be unprejudiced, keep a record of your cases, very important. I can definitely say this, that because I have been practicing for more than 30 years, so keeping a record of cases, keeping a record of your successful cases, and sharing with others is extremely important. There are many people, many homeopaths who want to learn, who want, who have difficulty, even I have difficulty in my cases. But when I hear Dr. Vishwala speak, or when I hear about when uh, Dr. Rushtali speaks, or somebody from our NJH group, they speak, I, it clicks in my mind that this is the prob probable remedy which I can give to my one of my case. So listening helps a lot. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, NJS family for always being there. Thank you, my colleague, Dr. Vrushali. Thank you, Vishpala, Madam. Thank you, participants, my patients and my family. Thank you very much. <laughs>